Hello and welcome back, it's Dr. Red Frizzle here again, and today I'd like to talk to you a bit about glycolysis, which in case you don't know is the first stage of uh, first stage of anaerobic and aerobic respiration because it doesn't actually need oxygen to take place. Um, in my previous videos obviously it was discussed like GCSE level and stuff, uh, and this is actually A level. And the reason for the jump is just because I want to do something do, do something a bit different to like mix it up a bit. So today I'm going to talk to you about glycolysis, the first stage in cellular respiration. Um, glycolysis, and the reason why I'm only doing glycolysis is because this is this is quite a complex process. So if I do it video by video, it should hopefully get you in the swing of it, step by step sort of thing. So first of all, you have your glucose molecule. Now for each glucose, it ends up forming two per pyruvate molecules. Okay, first of all, glucose is phosphorylated into something called hexose phosphate. Now basically all you need to know about this, this is a six carbon molecule, this is also a six carbon molecule. Um, what happens is an ATP, adenosine triphosphate, gives one of its phosphate groups to this glucose. So inorganic phosphate or PI is how you usually express that. Um, it's broken down into an ADP or adenosine diphosphate molecule. Um, it's then phosphorylated again to a hexose biphosphate molecule. Biphosphate. Hexose biphosphate, which also has six carbons as well. Um, and the same thing happens again. So you have an ATP that's converted into an ADP by the addition of, of one of the inorganic phosphate groups from this ATP to give to the hexose phosphate in order to phosphorylate it to hexose biphosphate. Now at this stage, hexose biphosphate 6 carbon molecule is split into two free carbon molecules and these are known as triose phosphate, up abbreviated to TP usually, so free carbon molecules of TP. Now I'm going to run out of space, I'll start again up here in a minute. Um, now, now to get from here to here, it's obviously split into two. Um, I'll write TP up here. But these aren't different TPs. These are exactly the same as these. I'm just writing up here for space. Um, these then go down to something called pyruvate. So these change into pyruvate. I'm just drawing arrows for the purpose of this video to show you that it's just changing into these pyruvates. So how it does this is there's a, there's a number of different steps that happen now. And this first bit here is known as phosphorylation. And this bit here is known as oxidation. Now you might be familiar with the term oxidation. It just basically means oxidation is loss of electrons. But oxidation, because it's loss of electrons, it can also be gain of hydrogen. So gain of H, I'm going to write because H is the chemical symbol for hydrogen. Um, so, so triosphosphate is converted into pyruvate. Also in this process, there's this thing called NAD. It's a type of coenzyme which assists enzyme action. Um, so NAD is formed into reduced NAD. Now the reason why I'm drawing you these two separate lines is because there's two molecules of triosphosphate. Some people might like to, like to just write 2TP and 2NAD which is reduced because basically the same thing happens over here as well. NAD is reduced. So you, in total you have two reduced NAD. Now it's reduced because the triosphosphate gives its hydrogen to, to, to this coenzyme that's called NAD, which means that this has become oxidised because it's lost its hydrogen because it's given it to NAD to reduce it. And I know there's a lot of quite, quite technical terms now. I might make some separate videos on oxidation and, and um, oxidation and reduction just to give you some, just to give you a greater understanding of what, what that is because that confuses me at times as well. Um, Anyway, you have also have your um, four ADP and PI, which is four inorganic phosphates, as I discussed above here, um, and four ADP adenosine diphosphate with two phosphate groups. Now, within this, when this inorganic phosphate, or actually I should write four PI because there are four of these. Um, I actually meant to write four ADP and PI because there's four PI and for ADP, 
Right, now these join together in order to form ATP, which is no surprise really to you, it shouldn't be, because adenosine diphosphate joins with an extra phosphate in order to form adenosine triphosphate, which just means three phosphate groups. So ATP, and this, there's four ATP formed in here, but if you have a look at this stage, one ATP, two ATP is actually used. So overall in this process, you're left with two ATP, which is the net gain. Net just means overall gain. So right, two ATP net gain. And you've also got two pyruvate. And you've also got two reduced NAD. Now I'm going to quickly write out for you where these particular things go. ATP is just used for energy because it is the energy currency of cells. Um, pyruvate is, is, goes to the next stage of res, uh, of aerobic respiration because this next stage does actually need oxygen so it's only aerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration is a different process and I'll discuss that probably in a later video with you. Anyway, the point is that this pyruvate is used in a link reaction which is stage two of um, aerobic respiration. And this reduced NAD goes straight to step four which is something called oxidative phosphorylation. Now I don't expect you to have heard of any of these different stages because I haven't gone through them with you yet. But I will go through them with you in a later video. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been helpful and that's glycolysis. Thanks for watching.